Let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, when we were in darkness, you found us, you gave us the light, and you saved us from eternal condemnation. Thank you so much for making us your children. And now we are living in the hope of eternal heaven. So Lord, we are here again to listen to your word. Strengthen us and encourage us so that we can continue to serve you and please you in coming days. So Lord, because of the pandemic, Many people are discouraged and even brothers and sisters are depressed. So Lord, please strengthen them so that we can go through this pandemic with the power and strength from you. So from the beginning to the end, I commit the rest of time unto your mighty hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, let's turn to Psalm number 62, verse 11. Psalm number 62, verse 11. Psalm number 62, verse 11. Let's read it together. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. I just checked the news today and we have uh, 950 new cases today, which is the, the record high uh, number. I know that it's much worse than in other countries. Uh, in Korea, the situation is, was okay and we thought it was under control, but now it looks like it's uh, getting out of control. And I hear that uh, many brothers and sisters you know, sometimes they are depressed because of this coronavirus. It's going on and on and on. Even though we hear about the vaccines and um, some medicine to cure this disease, but still uh, the situation looks uh, pretty bad. So today I'd like to talk about the power of God, the strength of God we need, especially in this difficult time. So let's see um, how, as Christians, we can um, live powerfully, uh, strengthening others, because our God is mighty God, and He is the one who gives freely all we need, including the strength and power we need. So, uh, Psalm number 62, verse 11, God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Twice means, you know, he repeated. Why? Because this is important. The God we believe is mighty God. Now, we remember when he created everything except human, he did in his word. Let there be light, and there was light. Let there be fish in the sea and animals on the earth and birds in the sky. It just happened, right? Even the Bible says... Isaiah chapter 48 verse 13 says, When I call to them, they stand up together. They means the whole universe. When, I, when God says stop, everything will stop right away. Right? That is the power of God. And the power is with us, actually. Right? And we need that power to live as a Christian. Jesus was God himself, you know, you know the uh, Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. There are three persons, but in one God. And as God the Son, Jesus didn't need anything from God the Father. Actually, he himself has the power. However, the scripture says, Jesus received the Holy Spirit and the power from God abundantly. Why? He always set the example for us, right? Uh, like when he was tempted three times, that shows that 
you know, as Christians, we should also overcome the temptation of Satan. So let's turn to Acts chapter 10, verse 18. Acts chapter 10, verse 18. Acts chapter 10, verse uh, 38, sorry, 38. Let's read it together. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. On this earth, Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Basically, he had a heart for the people. He cared for the people. And that power was from God. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power. When does the Holy Spirit come into our heart? At the moment of our, of, of our salvation. Actually, without the Holy Spirit, we cannot believe the truth. Right? The Holy Spirit opens our heart and helps us to understand the truth. And that's how we get saved. No matter how many times you are sitting in the Bible seminar, you know, if, unless the Holy Spirit helps you, you cannot understand the truth. Right? And now we have this confirmation. Wow! Even my sins are all cleansed. And now I can enter the heaven boldly. Because Jesus said it is finished and all my sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. And God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power abundantly, without limit, basically. Right? Why? Because God wanted to show us that we need the Holy Spirit and power from God to work for His glory actually, in our ministry. Remember, we have no power on our own, right? Let's turn to Second Corinthians, chapter four, verse seven. Second Corinthians, chapter four, verse seven. Second Corinthians, chapter four, verse seven. Let's read it together. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. The treasure, what's the treasure? You know, the eternal life we have, the Holy Spirit we have, this is the treasure, right? We were dead before spiritually, but now we are alive. We have been born again. And now the life, is working in us. The power is working in us, right? We have this treasure in earthen vessels, which means earthen vessel. We, you, you make a, 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 you know, like a potter, they make a, some vase or some container, but it, it's breakable. You know, you can break it easily. We are earthen vessels, you know. If car hits us, we are dying right away. Right? This body is so weak, actually. Look at this, or this uh, coronavirus. Uh, one day I was reading a newspaper article, which is really interesting. If you collect all the coronavirus all over the world now, which infected people, uh, there are like uh, you know, tens of millions of people who are infected, right? The virus is so small, so when you gather them together, all the virus on this earth right now, it weighs less than one kilogram, one kg, and you can get all the virus. So basically, with this uh, less than one kg virus, this whole world, we have an economical problem, we have a... Uh, all kinds of problems. Actually, uh, in Japan now, uh, many places, there was uh, infections in the hospital. So those who have a critical condition, medical condition, they cannot be treated. And it's really 
a dangerous situation because they need the treatment, but they cannot because uh, the hospital was um, quarantined. And they cannot see the doctor. They cannot be treated. And that's why people are dying. Actually. But it's less than 1 kg, the whole virus. You see, we are so weak, right? But the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So now we know that the reason why we can work for God is not because we are strong enough, but because we are receiving this power from God. Remember, you need the strength and power of God to serve Him. You cannot work on your own. You know. It should come from God. I remember one story from the book, Pilgrim's Progress. If you haven't read it, read it. That is like a, wherever, wherever the Christianity is spread, the first book which is translated is the Bible. The second one after the Bible is the book by John, John Bunyan, The Pilgrim's Progress. And the Christian, the main character, visits uh, some house, and then the master of the house shows him something interesting. There's a, in, in one room, there's a furnace on the wall, the fire burning, right? And there's one man with a bucket of water pouring the water onto the fire to extinguish it. But the fire kept burning and burning. So Christian was wondering, how come the fire doesn't go out when the man tries to you know, put it out with the water. And the master took him to the other room, the next room. And there he could find that someone was pouring the oil behind the wall, providing this oil into that furnace. So he realized, wow, this is why. And of course, this oil represents the Holy Spirit. And the person who was pouring the water is Satan. Satan is trying to extinguish the Holy Spirit in our heart. That's why our heart becomes cold sometimes. We don't care for other brothers and sisters, and we don't, we don't preach the gospel to the lost souls, even though we know that they're on the way to eternal destruction. That all happens because the devil somehow, you know, he was successful in quenching the fire in your heart, right? We are earthen vessels. We need power from God. That is true. That's why after Jesus resurrected, he commanded his disciples to stay in Jerusalem first. Don't go around, just stay there until what he promised would come upon them, right? Acts chapter 1. Let's turn to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Let's read it together. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Jesus already told them that he would give the Holy Spirit, you know, the helper, the comforter. And what he said here is, the Holy Spirit would come to you as I promised. So just stay in Jerusalem. Don't go here and there, just be together, praying together until the Holy Spirit comes upon you on the day of Pentecost. Why this is important? You know, Jesus resurrected and they saw, resurrected Jesus and they could go and talk to people. Hey, I saw Jesus. It wouldn't work until and unless the Holy Spirit is with them. So verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. This is the God's Jesus' promise. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Peter, 
You remember he denied Jesus three times. Such a coward. But after receiving the Holy Spirit, he became so bold when he preached. 3,000 got saved and later 5,000 got saved. Why? Because he received the power from God. That's why we have to seek his might, his power, his strength. Christian life is successful when we have the power from God. Some people, some Christians think that God is so demanding, you know. God is saying, give me this, give me that, you know, come to the Sunday service and join the fellowship and, uh, you know, give the offering, all these things. So they think that, oh, the Christian life is so difficult because God is asking for so many things. Is it true? Well, God is the one who gives us everything we need. Jesus one time shared the parable of minas. Everyone got one mina. What, what is mina? The, the coin, the money. So mina represents salvation as well as whatever we need for our Christian life. It's different from talent. Talent is also the money you need, but talent means gift. That's why everyone has different talent. Some got five talents, you know, one talent because they have different uh, abilities, right? Somebody sings well, someone is very smart. It's all different. But Mina is uh, not talent. Mina is what we get from God uh, with our salvation. For example, God gave us the word of God, the fellowship, the church. And we can pray for each other. We can strengthen each other. You know, all this, um, whatever we need for our Christian life is given for us. So, let's turn to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. There's one person who was mistaken. Luke chapter 19, verses 20 and 21. Luke chapter 19, verse 20 and 21. Let's read it together. Then another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief. For I feared you because you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. Well, this person, he was totally wrong, actually. He said, I feared you. Don't fear God. I mean, we respect God, but we are not of. We are not afraid of God. It's not like a God is standing next to us to, to rebuke us whenever we make a mistake. No, He's right there to help us. He's right there, right next to you and me because He cares for us, right? But He said, uh, you collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. So I was uh, afraid that if I lose, if I lose this mina, now, I would be um, rebuked by you. So I just kept it, you know, handkerchief, doing nothing. Well, is it true? God collects the, what he did not deposit and reaps what he did not sow. Is it true? No. Actually, the reason why I'm breathing and I'm talking, I'm living, and uh, it's all because of God, right? Everything is from God. And there's a, one beautiful scripture I remember. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Let's read it together. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You see, God didn't spare his own son. His own son. I have two sons. You know. They are most precious for me. Right? They are invaluable. 
can you give up on your son in exchange for something? You know, no way. If your son is sick and they need some kind of uh, medical treatment and it costs a lot, you would get the money actually, you know, no matter what. It might be $1 million, $1 trillion, it doesn't matter. Of course, sometimes it's impossible to, to get this fund, but you would try your best and you would say, I will pay you back. I will do my best. Just please treat my son. Right? Because his life is so valuable to you and me. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, that's what he did, right? How shall he not with him also freely gives us, give us all things? Isn't it logical to expect God to give us everything we need? Why? Because he already gave the most precious son of his for us, right? So let's remember, God is giving and giving and giving. And that's why even today, you and me, we can live as a Christian. We can maintain our Christian life because of the strength and power of God. So let's ask ourselves, is the power of God working in us? Am I a powerful Christian? That was the question Apostle Paul asked the brethren in Corinthian church. Why? Corinthian church, it had a lot of problems, right? There was a division. Some people say, I'm following Apostle Paul. I'm with Apostle Peter. No, they were divided. And even there were sexual sins among the brethren also. They were suing each other in human court, not resolving the issues in the church. And some people came to the Lord's Supper early and became drunk. And the other brother, sister who came late had no, no bread to eat. All these things were happening in Corinthian church. And this is what Apostle Paul said. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 19 and 20. Let's read it together. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord wills. And I will know, not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Apostle Paul is saying, let me see God's power working in you. Because that's the evidence that you belong to God. And that's the evidence that God is using you. Right? The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So let me ask you. Is God's power really working in you? Is it? When you preach the gospel, people listen to you. And when you pray for others, you know. God answers your prayer, and when you encourage other people, they are strengthened so that we can, they can work together. When you are supposed to do something in the church, right? You do that with the power from God. That's the secret. I see some brother, sister who are so tired and who looks very tired. Because maybe the work given to them is too much. But mainly, it's because they are not receiving the strength and power from God. Now, remember, God created the whole universe with His Word. right? If He just helps us, we can achieve anything. There's nothing impossible, really. So, what matters is really God's power is with us or not, right? Apostle Paul said, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. I really thank God for using our church to preach the gospel 
the whole world, actually. We didn't imagine it would happen. We are going to more than 70 countries and in Bangladesh, uh, because our Swan Church is supporting Bangladesh mission, uh, there's a Dhaka church and there are 12 more fellowships gathering here and there. And it's amazing, you know. Um, sometimes they are persecuted, right? These nominal churches, sometimes they persecute the true Christians. But still they are gathering, they are listening, and they are growing, and then we really pray for Bangladesh mission. Okay. So, it's because God works with us. Right? Emmanuel God is with us. If you have a power of God, people see that. Let's turn to Matthew, chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Matthew, chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Matthew, chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Let's read it together. At the time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist, he is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. This Herod, the king, he heard about Jesus healing people, raising people from the dead, all these miracles and wonders. You know, what happened was, he took the wife of his own brother, Philip, and John the Baptist came, he was rebuking him, criticizing the king of his wrongdoing, and then he the king took him to the prison and later, uh, by the request of the daughter of Herodia, that woman, he beheaded John the Baptist. He is the one who killed John the Baptist. And now when he heard about Jesus, he said, verse 2, and said to his servant, this is John the Baptist, he is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. John the Baptist didn't perform any miracle, by the way, but even King Herod, he realized, he knew that the powers of God were working in John the Baptist. And when he heard about Jesus, he said, this is John the Baptist because I see the same power working in him. So let's remember, even these um, unbelievers, they noticed something powerful was with John the Baptist. And if you know what happened to John the Baptist, he received the word of God, the power of God in the wilderness. This is interesting. How can you receive the power of God? No? Sometimes we come to the church, there are many brothers and sisters, we listen to the word of God and uh, we work together. That's all good. No? That's what we are supposed to do. However, you need also this intimate Intimate fellowship with God, one-to-one -one fellowship. That's when we, you are in the wilderness, actually. Let's turn to Luke. Luke chapter 3. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 3, verse 2. Luke chapter 3, verse 2. Let me read. While Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. On the line, in the wilderness. Why? John the Baptist was not among the crowd. He was alone in the wilderness. Lonely, actually, right? But that's when the word of God came to him, makes him very strong. Do you know, you need that time, quiet time with God. Remember Moses. When he was in the palace, respected by many people, the word of God didn't come to him. But it was when he was in the Midianite wilderness, when God talked to him and strengthened him and used him. Apostle Paul, he wrote Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, and Philemon, when, while he was imprisoned. Right? When he was in the prison, you know, I think he suffered a lot there because the prison was, at that time, um, 
you know, it's, it's not such a good facility at the time. Even now in some countries, you know, prison, when you go to the prison, you suffer. But there, there he wrote, Apostle Paul wrote these epistles. Why? That's where you feel the presence of God, right? In the wilderness, in the wilderness, in the desert, in the prison. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24, verse 63. Genesis chapter 24, verse 63. Let's read it together. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening. And he lifted his eyes and looked, and there the camels were coming. Uh, the camels were coming because uh, Rebecca, uh, his would-be wife, was on the way. You know Isaac, right? He was a very peaceful man. Whenever he dug a well, people come and say, this is ours, and he said, okay, you take it. He didn't quarrel with people because he believed in God. Right? And look at him here. Isaac went out to meditate in the field. He was alone in the field. I think that's when the Rebecca saw him first, for the first time, right? Isaac was in the field, meditating and you know, having fellowship with God in the field, in the evening time. Right? That's how you receive the power and strength from God. With this intimate and close fellowship with God, you get the power and strength. God is the source of all the power. Remember. Let's turn to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2 verse 20. Daniel chapter 2 verse 20. Let's read it together. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Wisdom and might. Verse 23. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we ask of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. Wisdom and might, these two things are what we need for our Christian life. It's like um, wisdom, it's, it's, we need wisdom to, to know the direction where we are going. It's like a, when we have a car, you need a driver, good driver to get to the destination, right? So direction, direction is wisdom and might, the power, that's the fuel. Right? The fuel, which means that, you know, if, even though you know where you are going, if you have no gas, there's no way you can get there. You know? So we are driving now. Our Christian life is like a driving. Some people, they don't have wisdom, but they have power. And they become so wrong, getting some wrong places. Right? I saw some people like that. They don't read the Bible, they don't listen, they just do whatever they want, and then they finally, they end up in wrong places, right? So we need wisdom. We need to read the Bible more, we need to listen to the Word of God, so that we know what, God, what God's will is, right? But we also need the power, might, to get there. Suppose we know we are, we are to preach the gospel, but Without the power of God, we cannot influence other people. People do not listen to us. No? Right? We need this might of God. Wherever the power of God is, God saves people. The power of God is given primarily to save people because death is what pleases God the most, right? 
why God would strengthen us to expand the kingdom of God, to preach the gospel. In Chuan Church, this year, of course, because of the pandemic, we couldn't have the Bible seminar uh, in the church building. It was online. But I remember from May, um, from May, because um, it became serious in March, from that time on we could meet in the church, from May, June, July, August, September, October, November, even this month, we had Bible seminar every month. I was amazed actually. Wow. Because I heard in some churches in Korea, they couldn't hold the Bible seminar due to this situation. But in Suwon Church, somehow every month, we were having this Bible seminar again and again and again every month. Even uh, this week, from Monday to uh, you know, Friday, yesterday, we had this uh, Bible seminar for the young adults group. And I'm amazed. Wow. Somehow, our Swan Church is, uh, we are strong enough to hold the Bible seminar again and again. And uh, some new people listen. Of course, they cannot come to the church. Uh, but they are listening online. Some are saved. That is the power of God, actually. Because... We are praying, God, please help us and use us because, because of this coronavirus, it's extremely difficult to preach the gospel. But God, if you are with us, you know, we can make something impossible possible. And we kept preaching the gospel. That's the power of God. We are not discouraged, actually, because we you know this situation. God allowed this situation to happen. We just do our best. That's all we do. Okay? No matter what happens, think about these Christians who were hiding in this uh, catacomb, the underground graves in, during the Roman Empire time. Okay? So in the early church times, uh, the Christians were persecuted. They were hiding underground because uh, no Roman soldiers dared to enter this underground graveyard. It's too complex. They, they would get lost easily and they would, would die there. So they wouldn't enter this underground graveyard. That's why the Christians were there. So I'm just thinking about this catacomb sometimes. Um, how could they preach the gospel? Actually, just staying there whole life without even going out because they might get caught and they might be persecuted. They might be martyred if they get caught. But still they were there, keeping their faith, praising God. Wow. I'm just touched. Okay? Maybe they couldn't have achieved many things for God. Right? You know, when the persecution is there like that, how could they preach the gospel? When you believe in Jesus, you would die. So, it's extremely difficult to preach the gospel. But still, they did their best. And they were together in this underground graveyard to keep their faith. We need this strength and power from God to continue to serve Him. And Apostle Paul one time said, like this, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Let's read it together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know not everyone can say this, actually. But Apostle Paul, this is his testimony. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the key, right? He didn't say, I can do all things with my own power. No way. No. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God strengthens me, if Jesus strengthens me, if he provides 
the power and strength for me. Then I can do all things. That's true. Why? Our God is mighty God. Don't limit your God. Some Christians limit our God. You know, because of the unbelief of people, sometimes Jesus couldn't um, show much. He couldn't perform many miracles, right? Matthew chapter 13. Let me just tell you what happened. Matthew chapter 13, verse 58. 57 and 58, Matthew chapter 13, verses 57 and 58. Let's read it together. So they were offended at him, but Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Jesus, he couldn't do. He didn't do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. The problem is our unbelief. What can I do? You know, I'm just, I'm nobody. Many times, whenever I uh, contact some brothers and sisters to appoint them as church officers, especially at the end of the year, I, I call many of the brothers and sisters to tell them, Okay, could you become the leader of this men's group? Could you become the leader of this ladies' group? You know, I have to inform them, right? And they say, Pastor, I, I don't know whether I'm qualified to do that job or I don't know whether I am able to do that job. I, I don't know, Pastor. Then I say, it's okay. I'm glad you said you don't know, you know whether you can do that or not, because if anyone says, yes, pastor, I know, I'm just for that position. I'm fit for the position. I, I was waiting for your call. Why you call, called me so late? If I hear something like that from uh, any brother or sister, I would say, oh, brother, maybe I have to think about it again. Uh, maybe you are not the one. Because, you know, how can you say I'm qualified? No, I'm, I'm enough to do the job, to lead people in the church. Well, nobody's qualified, actually. Okay? But we say, yes, Pastor, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I know I'm not able to do anything on my own, but with God's might, and his power and his strengths, I will do my best. I will pray to God and I know God is with me all the time. So I will try. So pastor, please pray for me. And then I feel okay, actually, right? Jesus couldn't do many mighty works because of the unbelief of people. You know why? what happened? He went to his own, own hometown. They, they saw Jesus growing up there. They knew Jesus was a carpenter's son, right? Verse 55, is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Right? That's why they couldn't believe in Jesus Christ when Jesus said, I'm from heaven. You know, I'm the son of God. They say, I know you are the son of Joseph. Why do you say you are the son of God? Because they didn't listen to him. And because of that unbelief, Jesus couldn't do mighty works. But you can do all things. I can do all things through Jesus who strengthens you and me. One pastor gave this testimony when he got saved a long time ago. He was worried that if any persecution comes, especially like, um, you know, they sh you know, sometimes people die uh, for their faith, right? It happened many times in the history, not in Korea now, but he was just thinking that 
can I, can I really uh, die for the Lord? Like, uh, can I be martyred for the name of Jesus Christ? Don't worry. You don't have to worry about that because it is God who will strengthen you if the time comes. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. This is the exhortation of Apostle Paul for Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Let's read it together. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Apostle Paul said, Share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to to the power of God. What does that mean? You know, when you are persecuted, God will give you the strength and power to overcome any fear. You know? In the time of persecution, God will strengthen you. There have been so many martyrs. You know, even the little girls died in the fire and uh, sometimes they were killed by the hungry lions in that Colosseum, that Roman arena. What happened was, it was God who strengthened them. You know? John Wesley, when he was on the way to America for his mission trip, there was a storm and he saw that some group of Christians were singing praises. At the moment, when they might die because of the ship, shipwreck, right? Even the little children were very calm. So how could that happen? According to the power of God. So the only thing you need to do for your Christian life is seek His power. First, First Chronicle, chapter 16. First Chronicles, chapter 16. Verse 11. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. Let's read it together. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. This is the David's psalm, right? Seek the Lord and His strength. Ten years he was on the run because King Saul tried to kill David. How could he be encouraged? How was he strengthened? He said, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. And this is what we need to do. Are you seeking his strength? God, please be with me, help me, encourage me, and tell me what to do, God. I don't know what to do. After I got saved in 1989, I've been in the church uh, more than 30 years, and then so many things happened, right? For example, in the year 2000, right, I was a member of a New Jersey church in America. Uh, there were IED members, 30 or 40 members at the time, without pastor or without any evangelist, no one preaching the gospel. I think we were watching the video all the time. And then the, when the, our when senior pastor came to the States for some retreat, I was asking him, Pastor, please send us one pastor so that you know, we can grow more. We are somehow big in number and we need the guidance and, of this pastor. The next day, the senior pastor, Pastor Yuan, told me, well, I will appoint you as an evangelist of the church. So you preach the gospel there in the New Jersey church. You know what happened? I was a, a graduate student at that time, writing a thesis in my final years of my graduate study. And then 
The school I was studying was very far from the church. I had to drive four hours to get there, another four hours to come back. So it took me eight hours every Sunday to, to attend the church service, right? So which means that during the weekdays, I, have, I couldn't attend any fellowship, any, anything. And then I never preached uh, before and I never hold the Bible seminar. I never counseled any person. It was like a, no, everything was new. And now senior pastor is saying, you are, I will appoint you as an evangelist there. Well, I said yes. Not because I thought I was able to do all this job, but because I was thinking, well, I have to obey the senior pastor. No, I don't know how I could, uh, actually I was uh, later, I was uh, working as well as preaching. So I was a lay pastor. Um, I think it, I was a lay pastor for four years, including my time as a student and pastor. I was a lay pastor for four years, uh, which means that church didn't support me, right? I had my own job and then I was preaching. I still don't know how I could do that, but God helped me. Right? That's how I'm here right now. And also, when I was in India for 10 years, it was a, a, again a challenge for me, but when the, one of the senior pastors asked me whether I, I can go to India, I said yes. I didn't hesitate at all, actually. I believe that Everything happens for a reason. Nothing happens by coincidence. When, when pastor, senior pastor asks me to do something, it is the will of God, I believe. Because if not, it wouldn't happen. I always say yes, and that's okay because I'm seeking the Lord and His strength, and He always helps me. Without God's strength and might, there's nothing we can do, right? In the church, there's a power of God. The church, the church is where God's power is revealed, actually. It's amazing. You know, individually, we are nobodies, right? Um, according to Apostle Paul, in the church, there's no like a powerful politicians, no rich men. No wise men, we are nobodies. But when you are together and when God is working in us, we can achieve such a powerful, amazing things, right? Great things for God. Listen to Ephesians chapter 1, uh, chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Let's read it together. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The church. This is about the church. right? Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Us means the church. Okay. What happens us? What happens here is we are asking God. You know, we are praying to God for something. He is doing much more than we ask Him. Above all that we ask or think, God does amazing things in us according, according to the power that works in us. You see the power. The power is in the church. The strength and might is working with us. Right? That's why we have to thank God. We have to do more for God. There are so many people who are not, who haven't heard the gospel yet. I know uh, many of the brothers and sisters are watching this sermon abroad. Abroad means outside of Korea. 
because the Korean missionaries, when they preach the gospel to you, you have become saved, and now you are one of our churches, and you are listening, right? And I'm telling you what to do. You have to send missionary to other countries too. Okay? Why only Koreans should go out to preach the gospel? It's now your turn to send missionaries to other countries. Well, so far, as far as I remember, I haven't seen any missionaries uh, being sent by our churches in outside of Korea. So, you pray. This is a challenge for you, right? God blessed Korean churches. Why? Because we sacrifice and we, we do our best to preach the gospel all over the world. And now it's your turn. Don't say that, oh, pastor, uh, we are poor or you don't know our condition. Don't say it like that. You know, always, it's up to God, not to you, actually. He will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's how God works. Right? It's now your turn to do something great for God. How? Through Jesus Christ, who strengthens us, we can do all things through Jesus Christ. Right? Let's do 2 Chronicle, chapter 16, verse 9. 2 Chronicle. Chapter 16, verse 9. Let's read it together. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on you shall have worse. Well, in another version, NIV, to strengthen those who, whose hearts are fully committed to to him, to God. Okay. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. God is watching over everyone, right? His eyes are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to strengthen, in NIV, to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. To strengthen those whose heart. It's about your heart. Are you, is your heart ready? To do great things for God? Seek His face and His strength and His power and His might. That's, then God will use you. Okay? Are you depressed these days because of this coronavirus? Seek God's strength. He will strengthen you. You can comfort others. Actually, You can say, it's okay. You know, sometimes during this difficult time, our patient, we become patient, and then after, you know, we, we, we can endure this hardship together, and then when all of this is over, we'll find ourselves much more, much stronger, actually, much more faithful. That's true, right? God gives us this difficult time for a reason. You know, he's training us and he is testing us so that we can grow in our Christian life. What we need is his strength and his power. Right? The power belongs to God, not to you. Remember. That's why we have to always ask for his power and his might, his strength, so that we can continue to serve Him and to work for Him until Jesus comes. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of encouragement. Now we know how to live a faithful Christian life. We need your strength and power, Lord. Please encourage us and strengthen us so that we can praise you and we can glorify you until Jesus comes again. Lord, because of this pandemic situation, 
So many are suffering and they are suffering. So Lord, please help them. And I, I pray for all the churches all over the world with the missionaries, Korean missionaries and their family and local brothers, sisters. Lord, please strengthen them that they can, they can be patient during this time of affliction. So Lord, thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.